Cowabunga, toy fans! D21 Beast Rob here, back with another Ninja Turtle review for you. And today we're continuing our look at the Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows action figures available from Playmates in 2016. Now, of these two figures, I'm most excited to take a look at the Donatello figure because the original figure we got for the first film was a total stinker. Looking through the blister bubble, however, I do feel like this new Donatello is a marked improvement. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. But before we find out for sure, let's take another quick look at the packaging. Just like we saw with Michelangelo and Raphael, we have the Ninja Turtles logo at the top of the box that curiously does not feature the Out of the Shadows branding. We've got an image of Leonardo and Donatello in the upper right hand corner of the box, and then a blister bubble that does house the figure inside as well as their accessories, and of course we've got those color coded nameplates there at the bottom. Flipping these packages around, we'll once again see that there's no bio or enlarged photograph of the figure pictured inside. But we do have the Ninja Turtles logo in the upper left, and a backstory for the new movie, followed by a complete lineup of all the figures available in this wave. Alright Toy fans, well that's the packaging. Let's get this fearless leader and our resident techno whiz out of the box and see what they're all about. Alright Toy fans, here we have Leonardo and Donatello out of the packaging and I'm having a lot of fun posing these figures around. And both of these guys have some pretty great improvements over their previous movie counterparts. As you can see here, just like we saw with the Raphael figure from the first Ninja Turtle movie, this Leonardo figure has a much more muted color palette versus the new Leonardo figure that we're getting here on the left. I like that they've gone with a brighter shade of green for Leonardo's skin color with the new figure, and even the blue of his bandana and belt are a sharper blue than we got with the original figure. Now one of the unique things about Leonardo's character design in the first film is this obvious sort of samurai Japanese style aesthetic. And we're getting similar elements here with the Leonardo on the left. Seam style boots, he's still got the wraps around his legs, he's got wraps on his forearms, he's now lacking the shoulder armor and the forearm armor, and instead of being somewhat pantsless, although there is some unpainted detail here, Leonardo's got what I'm going to call Shogun pants, and I really like that the upper torso is not as busy as what we have with the original figure. Now in the first movie line, Leonardo was the only Ninja Turtle figure that actually had weapon storage, and they've repeated that this time, but I don't like quite how they've handled it with the new film. The original Leonardo had some brown scabbards, and those scabbards were actually removable if you wanted to pull them off. The new Leonardo, on the other hand, has a bright blue scabbard, which I think kind of sticks out, and it's not removable from the turtle shell. If I had my choice, I'd like the scabbards to be removable, but it's not a deal breaker for me, but I do wish the color was black. As any self-respecting Leonardo figure should, this Leo figure comes with a set of twin katanas, molded in a silverish grayish plastic. I like the ornamentation that's been sculpted into the handle of the actual sword itself. You can see that there's some tape sculpted in there, but then there's some sort of um, emblems that have been sculpted into the detail of the handle. We have a hilt that's got some sort of dings and scratch marks around it, and then of course the blade. Uh, this particular sword is a little bit warped, the other one's a little bit better, but like I said, he's got two of them and they fit comfortably into his hands, and this Leo figure actually features wrist articulation this time, so you can get him in some great sword poses. Magnificent. Let's move on to Donatello. Okay, so taking a look at Donatello. On the right, you've got the figure from the first movie, and on the left, you've got the figure from Out of the Shadows. And this Donatello figure improves on this piece of junk in pretty much every way possible, except he's still a bit back heavy. But this first movie, Donatello, had mostly black detail on him, which wasn't great at all. There's a ton of sculpted detail on this figure that just does not come through in the sculpt because they've just coated everything in no paint or just black paint. He's got a lot of detail in the back of his shell, which sadly never really came up in the movie, and he doesn't have any weapon storage, which, come to think of it, is also an issue with this Out of the Shadows Donatello. He's the only turtle in this line that doesn't have weapon storage. The original Donatello lacks the movie-accurate glasses sculpted onto his face. We do have that remedied with the new Donatello figure. And this first Donatello needed to kind of stand bow-legged to be able to stand up straight, and I'm glad it's not so bad with the new figure. But really, it's the overall sculpt and design for this Donatello figure that I'm absolutely getting a kick out of. Taking a look at the newer Donnie up close, I love the goggles that have been sculpted above his head. I wish they were painted all the way around, but it's a nice detail to have on this figure. He's got some sort of uh, GoPro cameras that are mounted to each shoulder. Hope we see that utilized in the film. I like the strap work that they've got on the front of the turtle, the paint detail that's been sculpted for the buckle or whatever that device is there. He's got nice sculpted detail here on the arm with the Super Nintendo controller. On the other side, we've got some nice purple wraps. Coming down the figure, you've got some sort of, I don't know, military pants. I really like the look of them. He's got a knee pad on one side. He even has combat boots. And as you rotate this figure around, he's got a sculpted backpack here that's pretty cool. Almost resembles the new Proton Packs for the new Ghostbuster film. And he's even got a set of headphones that actually plug into the side of his backpack, which I think is really cool. Now these headphones actually do fit onto the figure, but you kind of have to slide them on from behind. And you can see here, Donnie's able to rock out listening to his beats, or maybe listening to a, a drone, which we'll look at in just a second, as he's out saving the day. There is a peg on the back of these headphones, so they can plug right back into his backpack. 
But the fun doesn't stop there. As I just alluded to, he does have a drone accessory. A sort of quadcopter. Looks like it's meant to sit up like this. It's just a black piece of flexible plastic, but it's pretty cool that he has this as an accessory. It's got a camera mounted on top of it. And a cool thing about it is, while it doesn't collapse, it does actually store onto his backpack if you kind of put it around the antenna. So Donnie's able to gear up and take all of his stuff with him. Fortunately, the drone accessory isn't that heavy, so you're still able to store it on Donnie's shell and it doesn't really weigh him down too badly. And the last thing he comes with is his new bow staff. Now in the first film, we had this sort of telescoping bow staff, which I wasn't really a fan of. Really, it was just kind of a boring bow staff. The new one, however, is molded in silver plastic with prongs on the end of it, and it easily fits into the figure's hands. And thanks to the inclusion of wrist swivels this time, Donnie can actually hold his bow staff in both hands at the same time. But I have to say my favorite aspect of this new Donnie figure is the way that his character design seems to blend a militaristic look with technology. I'm really getting sort of a G.I. Joe meets Ninja Turtle vibe from this figure, and I absolutely love it. I'm gonna get you, Dad! Yeah! Franklin, stop! Wow, what's wrong, Herbie? When you come to a road, you need to stop. What? I've never heard that before. Crossing the street can be very dangerous. You need to make sure to look both ways, and always cross the street with an adult. Wow, I had no idea it was so dangerous! Now I know! And knowing is half the battle. Donatello, Ninja Turtle Hero. Height-wise, Leo and Donnie do stand right about five inches tall. Here they are compared to the Mikey and Raph from the same movie line. And here they are compared to the six-inch scale Marvel Legends Infinite series Wolverine. You know, Bob, they say knowing is half the battle. I get the impression you didn't pay attention in school much. Alright, Toy fans, well, that's my review of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, Leonardo and Donatello, released by Playmates in 2016. Overall, I find these figures every bit as enjoyable as the Raphael and Michelangelo we've already looked at. The articulation and posability of the Leo figure, while it could be better, is definitely working for me. And I'm having a lot of fun posing this guy around. Donatello actually comes with some great accessories, and he's a far improvement over what we got for the last film, so I'm glad that Playmates listened to our complaints. So, should you pick these figures up? Your opinion of the movie will factor into this, but for an $8 price tag, my answer is a resounding yes. For me anyway, these figures are just too much fun. Well thanks for watching this review toy fans! Now that you've seen all four turtles, which one do you like the best? Personally, I'm leaning towards Leonardo. And speaking of likes, if you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor and give this video a big thumbs up. Consider it a virtual high three. I think Mikey would approve. Be sure to keep up with me on Twitter and Instagram at D21Beast, and I'll see you shellheads next time. Booyakasha! You, sir, are a terrible father.